Coach, first meeting between these two teams was uh, also the second half of back-to-back for you. Um, what, what what do you remember? What stands out on tape from that fourth quarter? Yeah, I mean, they got hot. They made a bunch of threes and, and played very well, but um, we didn't play great. I don't think they played great for, for three quarters, and that kind of allowed us to hang around, but then then they got on fire in the fourth, and uh, and I think we ran out of gas a little bit, but you know, it's not, there's no excuses. They beat us and uh, they're an excellent team. And, uh, and their, that fourth quarter performance was impressive. What, what makes them excellent? When you see what they're about? Well, they have two, two great playmakers um, in uh, Levine and DeRozan, and they're extremely, I think, tough physical defenders. You know, they got a lot of guys that get into the ball. And then the most important thing is I, I think they have a great spirit. They, uh, you know, like the top teams in our league, they, you know, they, they seem to all play for one another and there's a, a certainty and clarity to to uh, to their group that they're trying to do this together. And I think that really helps them. Coach, uh, the way Chicago's roster is set up, I mean, you mentioned Levine, DeRozan, and then Ball, obviously, at the point. Just what type of challenge is that for the defense when you got so many dynamic playmakers and scorers? Well, Ball really plays off the ball. You know, it's uh, Levine and uh, and DeRozan that really do all the handling. But uh, But obviously, you know, Ball Caruso are good spot up shooters and tough defenders who can also make plays. So it adds to the levels of, you know, I think the depth of defending, playmaking, shot making, um, athleticism. So, you know, it's a, it's a really good team. I see that uh, James Johnson is uh, questionable tonight. Uh, if he can't go, does that create any opening to try and work uh, Blake Griffin back into the rotation? Uh, it's possible, you know. I think though they go small second unit, they go with Derek Jones Jr. So it's uh, it's not necessarily a, a team that, that plays a lot of bigs. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. Steve, last night, um, Patty had a really interesting answer at the end of his press conference where he was talking about how last night's game is sort of emblematic of the message of the season. Stick with it, stick with it, find a way to win, and then you can evolve from there as the season goes along. And then he said, you know, it hasn't clicked yet, but it's going to. And when it does, it's going to be exciting. And I'm just wondering, with that kind of perspective, how do you evaluate being 16 and 6, clearly not clicking all the way yet, but finding a way to win a lot of games along this road. Yeah. I mean, I, I think I've said it before. I'm proud of the group for the effort and willingness to to go on this journey. You know, like, like we keep saying, we have 10 new guys. We have um, a lot of change from last year, just in even the guys that were here last year, Nick, Joe have been out. Um, you know, Kyrie's not with us. So trying to form an identity that we didn't get a chance to plan or prepare for. Um, it, it takes time. And so that, that has got to be something that we enjoy embrace and, and kind of, uh, commit to for the entirety of the season. And so for us to be in a good position here, um, with, with a bunch of wins is, is really positive, but you know, I, I, it's not, that's not our real number one focus. Our focus is trying to find that identity and clarity and connectivity and play together and figure out how we can improve as a group and, and have the right approach and the right process. And if the process and approach is right, we will improve. And if we improve, I think we can be a really good team. Um, so that's really number one ahead of what's our record. Steve, good to see you. I have a question hey, Chuck. About the there are 10 teams playing 500 mm. and you've been doing this for a long time in the association. Where do you see the East right now? And granted, 20 plus games or whatever, but where do you think this is all going? Well, I, I mean, I, the simple answer is just it's uh, about as strong as the East has been for a long time. You know, there's there's very, there's, there isn't any kind of gimmies, so to speak. Um, you know, the West obviously is terrific as well and has, has some great teams at the top early in the season. But um, the East is uh, is deep and every night it seems like it's a, it's a battle. So uh, it's, it's good. I think it's good for the balance of the league and for this uh, kind of depth and, and parity after it feels like since the 90s. We, we haven't seen that. I could be wrong, but uh, in the East. So uh, lots of lots of games left, lots of things um, to settle, but uh, it's been exciting to see such a competitive Eastern Conference so far. Uh, Steve, one of the tap your offensive mind, the big picture question, it seems like offense is down to start the season league-wide. I was wondering mm-hmm. if you had any theories or you see any trends at all? 
Uh, you know, the two for me, and I, I could be missing some, and I, and I haven't really put so much thought into it, but the two for me are the physicality. You know, we're, we're trying to figure out some of these points of emphasis and it's been very physical, less fouls have been called, less free throws have been shot. Um, and then we're kind of in this three season, you know, matrix right now where guys have had a season and then a break in a bubble and then a extended kind of break and a, and a congested season and then a short off season and now a full regular season. I think that has an impact as well. And so, you know, those are the, the two main ones for me. And there's probably a few other really good, you know, reasons why we started out this way. But, um, you know, I think by the end of the year, things will kind of go back to the mean. Coach, yeah, you've had a couple of back to back so far. You haven't been able to win both games. Mm. What are the biggest concerns on the back to backs and what can you do to uh, change that trend tonight? Well, I think it just takes a lot of mental toughness. You know, we, we've had, we've had some injuries. We've had some, uh, you know, um, veteran players um, that are just starting their season, getting their, you know, getting their conditioning and rhythm. And so that's maybe had an impact as well, but um, you know, hopefully we can find a way to, put in two good performances on the back-to-backs, not uh, kind of run out of gas in the second one or, or um, you know, not, not be as sharp in the second one. So, um, you know, I've thought about this. I'm not sure I have an answer for you, you know, like I, I, I could, I could throw out three or four, but I'm not sure I feel really confident in any of them. Um, there is, there's a few components. You can try to be cute and figure out uh, ways to attack back-to-backs, but the reality is uh, that, uh, that you usually outthink yourself and then you end up kicking the first one and now you're scrambling in the second one. So I think it's really a matter of uh, our team growing and having the mental toughness to be sharp on the second night of a back-to-back. Steve, you rated fifth defensively. And, you know, early in the year, you said not a lot of people expected that uh, out of this group, but now it's 22 games in and you're still there, even though the roster's uh, rotation has been a little fluid. Uh, what do you feel is kind of driving that and has been the key to it? Mm-hmm. I've been proud of the players' effort. You know, um, our, our biggest thing still is shot discrepancy, um, giving up uh, offensive rebounds and turning the ball over, which kills your defense. And, you know, runouts and the PPP on on uh, points per possession on <clears throat> transition opportunities obviously skyrockets and it kills your defense and also kills your offense. So. The turnovers and offensive rebounds is something that we'll forever have to uh, combat. Um, So given those issues uh, and just that, you know, we're not a historically defensive um, roster, I'm really proud of the guys' attentiveness, willingness, uh, and ability to kind of lock in and commit down there. So, you know, we could get into the weeds of, of, you know, what's good, what's bad and all that, but really it comes down to a willingness and commitment. Uh, Kevin uh, was emphatic the other night talking about how much he likes to play and doesn't mind the the workload that he's got. Uh, but he's played uh, six straight games with at least 37 minutes, a couple 40 minute games. Uh, is there any restriction on him tonight? And and then just what what does it say about his attitude that he's at a point where he welcomes that kind of load? Kevin's mentality is. Uh a huge reason of why he's one of the best players of all time. You know, he loves the game. He comes in every day and, and has a, you know, laser focus on his routine. He finds the most happiness when he's on the basketball court. And he's, you know, that the success he has on the court is, is really the mentality as much as it is the gifts, you know, he's the joy that the game gives him makes him sacrifice every day. So to tell him, Hey, we're going to, limit your minutes on the back-to-back is not going to get over very well. So we try to sneak some minutes in here and there, um, but uh, or gets, you know, keep them on the bench for an extra 30, 40 seconds when we can. But, you know, it's a long season. We don't want to overburden him. At the same time, there's going to be pockets of the season where we don't have a lot of choice. Um, so uh, fortunately, he's the type of guy that comes to play and loves the game.